It's Wednesday, August 1st, 2012. August 1st, 2012. Who would have thought it? But here it is, and I'm, I am uh, blessed to be out in Hope, New Jersey. At our, our home in Hope. Reading, of course. the latest installment in the Euro puzzle, and believe me, this one's complicated. You will do well to just skip this one today unless you're not able to get your hands on a New York Times, because this one today is complicated, but it's uh, just a further pursuit of uh, the Euro puzzle, as they say. Most people have heard of the Marshall Plan, and perhaps Brady Bonds as well, but they have not yet heard of the Brunemeyer Plan, or the Bishop Bonds, or the Gross Accord. That is because they do not yet exist, except as dreamy proposals by economic thinkers to fix the European debt crisis. Or the Lenhardt plan, but that, the Lenhardt plan also fits in there. And my plan is simply to, pres to print a thousand, a, a trillion euros and give 500 billion to Spain and 500 billion to Greece. And don't worry, they'll spend it all anyway. And, uh, there will be no inflation because uh, they need the money. So that's the Lenhardt plan. Just simply print a trillion euros, and if you need more, you print a trillion more. But nobody takes my plans seriously. While dealing with Europe's financial difficulties has been a grim slog for the continent's austerity-weary citizens and its frustrated policymakers, it is the opportunity of a lifetime for ambitious idea merchants looking for fame. Well, maybe they're not just looking for fame, maybe they're looking to actually solve the problem. Although, again, simply a trillion euros spread around would do a lot of good. If any of them can come up with a plan that is adopted by Europe, they will have secured a coveted place in history like George C. Marshall, the Secretary of State, who fashioned the plan to help rebuild Europe after World War II, and Nicholas F. Brady, the Treasury Secretary, whose introduction of a class of investor-friendly bonds helped in the Latin American financial debacle in the 1990s. Oh yes, but this is a grim slog. Grim slog, what a great name. Grim slog. Woo. Three in particular, who are respected in top policy circles and have access to the right people. Here, I'll Marks, show you. It's James Bruno Meyer, Graham Bishop, and Daniel Gross is proposing a grand plan to save the euro from financial and ruin, Bishop, and to do it in a way that may break through the political impasse that has made solutions. Daniel so Gross. Gross. And Marcus K. Brunermeyer. And me, my plan is to simply spread trillions of euros throughout Europe as needed. Each is proposing a grand plan to save the Eurozone from financial ruin and to do it in a way that may break through the political impasse that has made a solution so elusive. None of them or anyone else are assured of success given the depth of Europe's problems and the difficulty of reaching consensus among the 17 European Union countries using the Euro. One problem is, like I've seen pointed out in the papers any number of times, is that in the United States, a state that is having problems still gets its Social Security and its Medicare and all this kind of stuff, um, and th which keeps the country humming, keeps the state humming, whereas Greece and Spain and Italy and Ireland, they get nothing from the... Um, from the, from the European Union. They're just in trouble. The rival approaches vary, but all are meant essentially to help the two big Euro countries on the financial precipice, Spain and Italy, find buyers for their debt at a reasonable enough cost that their governments can afford to recharge their economies over the long run. Success would mean developing a solution that persuades cash-rich Germa. We have to change to page 8, but Cash-rich Germa. Hmm. Oh my, what a surprise. Cash-rich 
Germany that it will not be on the hook if these countries run out of money. Germany doesn't want to pay for the rest of Europe, and I don't blame them. It's a very complicated situation. Armed with PowerPoint presentations and not a little guile, they have been promoting their competing ideas in meetings at Brussels, the center of the European Union, Frankfurt, home of the European Central Bank, and in particular Berlin, where the approval of the German government officials is essential to the adoption of any plan. You understand, of course, that the reason that is is just Germany's got all the money, and Germany doesn't want to give all the money away. And who can blame them? There is no shortage of ideas to solve the crisis, but there is a shortage of actionable plans, said Mr. Brunemeyer, a finance professor from Germany at Princeton, who represents Euro Euronomics, a recently formed group of nine Eurozone economists focused on the European crisis. Mm. Yes. As he has shopped his plan, Mr. Brunemeyer, which, he, which calls for a type of Europe You know, it's noisier out here sometimes than it is on the on Riverside Drive, but nevertheless. As he has shopped his plan, which calls for a type of Europe-backed bond that would not place an onerous claim on German coffers, Mr. Brunemeyer has traveled a similar circuit as the other two who are promoting their own Euro restoration blueprints. Mr. Gross, head of, the, of an influential Brussels research group, and Mr. Bishop, a British specialist, a British specialist on European Union financial and regulatory matters. The odds remain long that any of these proposals will, will be adopted in full. History-shifting ideas tend to come from within governments, as was the case of the Marshall Plan or the Brady Bonds, not outside of it. But arriving at a plan that satisfies the Euro-using countries and Germany in particular has stumped government officials Thus, the opening for the well-connected policy entrepreneur. That's me. That's me. The Lenhard plan. Print. Get to printing presses and print a trillion euros and scatter them liberally around Spain, Italy, and Greece. And Ireland. Is, no, wait a minute. Is Ireland in the euro? I doubt it. Is Ireland in a euro country? I don't know. Maybe. Whereas England, England maybe not be, and Ireland maybe. Is that true? Is that possible? Have to find that out. And there is little time to lose, given the fundraising needs of Europe's weaker nations, according to a report by Bridgewater, a large United States hedge fund. Spain and Italy must issue 300 billion, billion euros, or $365 billion dollars, worth of bonds this year and 1.6 trillion euros or nearly $2 trillion dollars by 2015. They must, they must, in other words, they have to sell bonds and get the money in. Cash depleted banks in those countries are now following the lead of foreign investors by reducing their bond purchases, causing Spain and Italy's borrowing costs to climb to dangerously high levels in recent weeks. Good morning. It's now uh, August 2nd. I still haven't finished reading the article about how the economic thinkers test their plans to solve the Euro puzzle. Uh, it seems to always come down to the same thing, however. That somebody's got to help the countries borrow money and not charge them exorbitant interest rates. And of course, you, nobody wants to be creating money just to solve these problems because those who have the money, like Germany and maybe what Switzerland and the Northern European countries, those that are in the Switzerland's not in the Euro, uh, but um, the Northern European countries that make, that have all the money, they don't really want my plan to work, which is simply give me $3 trillion dollars and I will buy every euro bond from Spain and Greece and Italy. I will lend the money and when they can't pay it back, um, you'll lend me a couple trillion more and I'll do it again. 
Of course, Germany will say, well, no, we have lots of money now, and that will devalue our money. Well, the Germans are being short-sighted because if people have a couple trillion euros, what are they going to want to buy? Mercedes Benzes, the fastest ones they can find. Germany will, and France, mostly Germany, will end up with all the money anyway. So the Germans should just sit tight and let my little economic plan go. But no, they're not going to do it. So we're going to go back to, um, uh, it w you know, the more standard sort of ways to deal with the euro crisis. And that is the three guys who we've been talking about uh, in this plan. Uh, what, what are their names again? It's the next day and I have to remember. Uh, it, here, I'll show you. It, Graham Bishop, Daniel Gross, and Marcus K. Brunner Meyer. Anyway, all those guys seem to uh, be headed for the same thing. My plan. So, uh, Mr. Gross, who is German, as this is where I was yesterday but went to college in Italy and earned a doctorate in economics from the University of Chicago. So he's been around. He's now director of Center for European Policy Studies. He argues that the Eurozone's current rescue programs are too small to cast fear into the hearts of speculators who are helping to drive up borrowing costs for the bloc's weakest members. So see, he wants to get speculators to uh, uh, get out of... Uh, Euro, Euro bonds. Why not, he proposes, use the European Stability Mechanism's 500 billion euro cash cushion? You see, now you're talking about my plan. My plan is to just hand out about a trillion dollars at a time, buy the bonds, do whatever you want with it, but get it into the flow. And everybody says, oh no, inflation, it, things won't inflate. No, no, no. Everybody will just buy Mercedes, and the Germans will have all, all the money anyway. To bar, uh, use the 500 billion, billion euro cash cushion as a leverage to borrow up to five times as much from the European Central Bank. Five times as much as two and a half trillion. See, they're starting to look at it my way. The money could then be used to buy distressed Italian and Spanish bonds in the open market. Give it to me, I'll do it. I won't charge that much for my services. Give me... Come on. Five, two and a half trillion, I'll buy it all, I'll put it in the shed in the back, and I'll charge them a very, very small... Um, the money, yeah, here's where we were. The money could then be used to buy distressed Italian and Spanish bonds in the open market. He says, that, he says, would be easier and quicker than lending directly to those countries as part of a bailout. You buy a Spanish bond at 75 cents to the dollar, and you automatically reduce the country's debt. That's, uh, that's all I'm trying to say. Mr. Gross has been pitching his proposal largely to German finance ministry officials in Berlin, without whose support the central bank would be likely to adopt, would be unlikely to adopt such a plan. Without the German central bank's support, they, no one would be likely to do that plan, my plan either, so I've got to speak to the Germans also. While he will not reveal the details of interactions with the finance ministry, he points out that the government has not yet said no. Not yet said no. I'll do it. I'll do it. At more or less the same time, Mr. Brunemeyer says, has been making his own case in the same German circles. At the root of his Euronomic Group's proposal is the need in Europe for a safe financial asset that would stem the chaos of investors fleeing risky Spanish and Italian bonds and buying German securities. You see, that's it, that's it. The Germans just get everything and then it costs the Italians and the Spanish more and, and they lose out and they go broke. Mr. Brunemeyer and his colleagues argue that a new European debt agency should be formed that over time would buy up to 5.5 trillion euros worth of Eurozone government's debt directly from the governments and on the secondary market. 5.5 trillion. All right, I'm raising it up to 5.5 trillion. Let's just put it where it is. 5.5 trillion euros. And 
and just give it to me. I will. I'll buy all the debt from all the the lousy uh, the companies, the countries whose debt is not really, you know, that trustworthy. Uh, I'll buy it all. I'll buy it all. The debt agency would issue two types of euro bonds to finance these purchases. So would I. One would supposedly be extra safe, backed by the full credit of the eurozone. The other would be riskier, and investors would know going in that they would take a loss if a country like Spain or Italy defaulted. Well, no. No, 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 no. We're not having any risky bonds. We're just having... I mean, I don't quite get what they're doing here, I must admit. Uh, but fine. Okay. I, I, I don't quite get the picture yet, but if they give me the 5.5 trillion, I could settle everything very quickly, I think. With a little bit of coaching, a little bit of help, I could do it. Mr. Brunemeyer has nicknamed his low-risk bond the ESB for European Safe Bond. Oh, right. And mine would be the JESB for J's European Safe Bond. The JESB. I mean, I know. The, the SB is different from the original Euro bond proposal that Germany rejected because each country would still be responsible for making good on its own debts. Yeah, well, I, I'd like to see that, of course. The richer ones would not be fully liable for backing the bonds if the weaker countries got into trouble. Well, that's why you say give me 5.5 billion and let me just take all the uh, take all the chances. You know, let me take all the chances. So if uh, if Greece doesn't pay it back. Yeah, it's okay. I lose, the, I lose the money, and I still get my commission. I've still got, you know, like a a billion left over for myself, and uh, somebody gets that money. See, so it would be very helpful. And and you know, you try to create austerity measures and and real nice economy and and all these places, but you know, people need their Mercedes. The richer countries would not be fully liable for backing the bonds if the weaker countries got into trouble. In my plan, nobody's in trouble. As would have been the case under earlier Eurobond proposals, the ESB, the supposed safety of a common European bond without a 100% German guarantee may be difficult to sell to investors under current market conditions, but, uh, you know... But Mr. Brunemeyer says that his peers in Germany are intrigued. Are intrigued. I've got to go to Germany and talk to them about the Jesby. The Jaysby. The Jaysby. The J European Safe Bond. Jay's European Safe Bond. Mr. Grunemeyer says, I think this has a good chance of working, says Mr. Grunemeyer, who has traveled to Frankfurt and Berlin frequently over the last months to press his case. This is the least costly option. Less ambitious, although based on a similar principle of not holding Germany liable for all debts, is Mr. Bishop's plan. Mr. Bishop, a former investment banker and advisor to the European Commission, represents the European League... Oh dear. I'm gonna roll the window up here, I guess. Because it's, it's, it's Con Ed. Mr. Bishop, a former investment banker and advisor to the European Commission, represents the European League for Economic Cooperation, a group of entrepreneurs who support closer integration, who support closer integration in Europe, meaning political integration, which I think is really necessary. I think they've just got to stop all this infighting and you know, uh, cooperate with each other. It would be very good. We'd stop all the world wars. They seem to like to start, although we did our best in the last couple, last 30 years, but nobody would buy in. He has been pushing the idea of a Eurozone fund of about 2.5 trillion euros that would issue a series of short-term debt securities to match the borrowing needs of all Euros, Eurozone countries. I mean, you know, we know it's going to cause a little inflation, uh, but it's not going to cause that much inflation, and uh, Germany will end up with it anyway. And they're the ones mostly concerned, so they'll still have lots of money. The member nations' guarantees would follow the model of Europe's current bailout vehicle, the European Financial Stability Facility. Stability Facility, I like that. With Germany backing just 28% of the fund and thus not being obliged to pump in more money if a Spain or an Italy defaulted on its debts. Well... I, I still say, just give me 
whatever you need, three trillion, five trillion, whatever it takes, give it to me. Just put it in my account, put it in my account over at Capital One, and I will buy all those bonds and everybody will be great, and I will. Some experts wonder whether these proposals and their potentially daunting complexity miss a larger point that the Eurozone's sovereign debt crisis will not be resolved until Germany and other rich northern countries agree to accept the losses in the South through debt write-downs, whether by Greece, Ireland, Spain, or Italy. So apparently, Ireland really is in the Euro, because they wouldn't be talking about that otherwise. These proposals just move the losses and risks around, said Adam Larrick, a sovereign debt specialist and visiting scholar at the American Enterprise Institute. There are real economic problems in Europe. Financial engineering can conceal them from taxpayers, but it cannot make them disappear. I can make them disappear with my plan. They will disappear. Just create 4 trillion euros and let me disperse it. I will do it honestly and straightforwardly. And it'll go into the economy and everybody will be fine. But Mr. Bishop, who spends much of his time in Brussels, has already presented the plan to Herman Van Rompuy, president of the European Union's administrative body, the European Council. He noted that Mr. Van Romney alluded, oop, not Romney, Mr. Van Rompuy, R-O-M-P-U-Y, alluded to the proposal when he and other leaders laid out their visions in late June for the Eurozone's future. And lest there be any doubt that the three bankers sense a competition among their proposition, Mr. Bishop makes it clear. It's the front runner, he said, of his group's action plan, and it also represents an integral step toward coordinating mutual policies in Europe. Well, I agree, they need lots of mutual policies in Europe, they need a mutual government in Europe, and uh, they need to create five trillion euros and deal with the inflation. Now. Uh, you don't have to really use my plan, but if but if you use my plan, I'll really make sure that the money gets there. I, I mean, except for a small commission on my part, which I think is fair. Five trillion, okay, say not one percent, because that would come to, I don't know what, one percent of five trillion, but it might be 50 billion. Now that's too much. I just need a billion. I take a billion for my efforts. And, the, and we'll solve the problem. We'll solve it. You know, it seems easy, but it'd be, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be a slog. There was a word which we used, I think it was in the, in the initial part of this, which was so good that I have, to, I have to look at this word again. Slippery slog, what was that? I really need to find that, that beautiful, beautiful expression. Oh, what was it? Well, I'll, I, I said it, so I said it yesterday, so I'll find it. Anyway, uh, that's the end of my plan.